Welcome to another video. We have a piecewise function with some missing parts. We do not know the coefficient of x and we don't know the constant, but we know this is the equation of a line, of a straight line. We know that this is a quadratic, but if you fuse the two together, at some point here, you're gonna get the entire function. And we've been told that this function can be differentiated everywhere on the x-axis. So what exactly would a and b be? Now, the fact that you were told that this function is differentiable everywhere, some extra information has been given away if only you can catch it. A function is only differentiable at any point if it is continuous at that point. So, if you pay attention, you notice that this is a quadratic. A quadratic has no problem being differentiable. You can differentiate any quadratic expression, right? You can differentiate any straight line anywhere. So, this might be the only problem and that's the point you need to investigate. But we know, because we're told that f of x is differentiable at every point on the entire x-axis, it is also differentiable at this point because this is on the x-axis. So what are we looking for? Well, we just need to know what it means for a function to be differentiable at a point or what by implication it means to be continuous at the point or what does it mean to be continuous? Well, the function is defined at the point and not just defined, the limit also exists. And what do you mean by the limit exists? It means the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. All of that put together will give us the answer. Let's get into the video. So like I said, the function being differentiable at this point because it's differentiable everywhere on the x-axis, means that if you take the limit using this equation or this function, you will get the same answer as if you take the limit using this. So let's start with that, okay? Remember we said it is continuous at that point. It means the limit, the left, the one-sided limits are both the same. So we're gonna say that by continuity, We know that the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, which is going to be a, is it from the left? Yes, because it's less than minus 3 rather, minus 3 from the left of ax plus b will be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right. And the function we're going to be using is x squared plus x. This is the first condition for you to say a function is continuous. The limit must exist. And this is the way to show the limit exists. So what is this? We're going to plug in minus 3. See, we're going to end up with, if you plug in minus 3 here, you're going to get minus 3a plus b. If we plug in 3 here, or minus 3 here rather, we're going to get minus 3 squared is going to be 9 and 9 minus 3 is going to be equal to 6. So we have an equation. We have minus 3a plus b is equal to 6. We're going to keep that equation because we have to start thinking, what else do we know? Mm. We also know that you could have found this equation any other way, but I like this one that I have, okay? We also know, because the function is differentiable for all values of x, it means you can differentiate this function at this point, at the point negative 3. Whether you use this function or you use this function, you will get the same derivative. The value of the derivative, or the same slope, I should say. You'll get the same slope whether you use this function or this function as long as it is at the same point, negative 3. We're going to take the derivative of this. We're going to say f of x 
equals ax plus b, which implies f prime of x is equal to a. That's it. If you differentiate this, you're just going to get a. And we're saying that the derivative you obtained using this function is the same derivative you're going to obtain if you say, and we know that f of x is equal to x squared plus x, right? And we have f prime of x will be equal to 2x plus 1. So this is the derivative we're going to get, but this is only at this point. Remember, this one, at this point, we're going to evaluate it because the derivative at that point for this function is the same as this one. So if we plug in minus 3, which is this point, then we say f prime of minus 3, at, evaluated at minus 3, will be 2 times minus 3 plus 1. What do we get? We get Ta -ta -da -da, minus 6 plus 1, which is minus 5. No way. So, the derivative of this function is a, this is at x equals 3. Let's not forget, at x equals minus 3, rather. And that is the same derivative that we just obtained. It is minus 5. So, clearly, a is equal to minus 5. a is equal to minus 5. And since we've gotten a to be minus 5, we can go back here now and get what b is. So we know that minus 3a plus b is equal to 6. And we plug in minus 5 here. We have minus 3 times minus 5 plus b is equal to 6, which means b equals 6 minus 15. What's that? Negative 9. So... Our piecewise function is such that this is minus 5x minus 9, and this is x squared plus x. I wonder what the graph of that will look like. f of x is equal to these two functions, minus 5x minus 9, when x is less than minus 3, and it is equal to x squared plus x when x is um, greater than or equal to minus 3. So this is the function and it is differentiable everywhere. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.